just why are false teachers just like fallen angels, also known as demons? This is part five of the Book of Jude series. We've been working through the Book of Jude, and we see that Jude calls itself a needful message. And that is because it's a warning against false teachers. They creep into the church unaware or privately. They pervert the grace of God. They turn the grace of God into licentiousness. There's all type of lust, rebellion from God's authority, deception in the church. It's very important. There's also many exhortations for God's people in the book of Jude. It's a parallel passage to 2 Peter chapter 2. We have on the description section in this video other links to our website for if you want a written version of this or other videos related to this topic. Please consider subscribing to this, this channel and let's now move on. It's important to know how to interpret the Word of God. The most basic thing is that the Word of God is truth. That's where we find our truth. Jesus Christ is truth. The Holy Spirit is truth. The Bible is written by the Spirit of Christ. It's inspired. It's written by God. It's written through men, but it's been preserved miraculously by God. And when we interpret it, we have to. it's highly symbolic, but it's, com it's completely spiritual. We compare spiritual with spiritual. The Word of God with the Word of God. Jesus' words are spirit, they're spiritual, and they're life. So we compare Scripture with Scripture, go through the Bible. Jesus, of course, is the Word of God. We look precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little bit, there a little bit. And we make sure that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word should be established. We look at multiple verses in the Bible to establish truth. In the book of Jude, we find three examples about the judgment, the condemnation of these ungodly men that creep into the church. They're false teachers, and they're all over the church today. We saw in the last video, we saw the destruction of those who were saved out of Egypt as a type of the condemnation of these false teachers. In this video, we're going to look at the fallen angels, that they're in everlasting chains under darkness awaiting judgment, just like the false teachers. Next video, we're going to look at Sodom and Gomorrah. But for now, let's move on and look at this idea about fallen angels. As we said, Jude and 2 Peter 2 are parallel passages. In Jude 6, we find these angels which kept not their first estate. Their first estate was to be serving God in heaven with him. But they left. They followed Satan. They left their own habitation. He's reserved them in everlasting chains. They're under control, under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. In 2 Peter 2, 4, the parallel to this, uh, the Bible teaches, if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell. So hell is tied to this thing about being under everlasting chains. In darkness, they were delivered in these chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Very parallel passages. So we're going to look in this video, why are the false teachers like them? Because they, they both are going to bring a message. So let's take a look at that. And the false teachers are unsaved people that exist in the church today. Okay, so first let's look at who are the fallen angels? What are the fallen angels? And we find passages. And throughout this video, I'll tag uh, some other videos we've done on these topics. And we see in Revelation 12, for example, there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon fought in his angels. The dragon is a symbol of Satan, and his angels are the demons. He And prevailed not, neither was place found anymore in heaven. There was this war in heaven where the great dragon was cast out of heaven. A few verses earlier in Revelation 12, we saw the great, the great red dragon. His tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And those stars of God are angels. They were angels that were cast to the earth. These are what are known as the fallen angels. These are the angels that decided that they wanted to follow Satan. That, and we also see in Matthew 25, they shall say unto them on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire. The everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. That's Satan. His angels are demons. And then, by the way, in the King James, the word demons is often translated as devils. But we see that, that demons are these fallen angels. So when we look now back in the book of Jude, we see that an example of these angels, the angels who kept not their first estate, 
they're the likewise the false teachers these filthy dreamers defile the flesh and they despise dominion that's just like the fallen angels they despise the authority of god they didn't want that dominion that word dominion there is lordship curiotes they despised being part of the kingdom of god they wanted to be evil they wanted to follow satan the dreamers are likened to the the false teachers Dreamers can be those who falsify the word of God, Zechariah 10. And we also see that to despise, when one despises the dominion of God, God's authority, that word despise literally means to cast off or set aside. And we see that all around us today, humankind in that sense despise the lordship of God, just like these fallen angels did. And again, the false teachers are like the fallen angels. They reject the authority of God. They follow Satan. And again, there's a parallel passage in 2 Peter 2. Chiefly them that walk after the flesh and the lust of uncleanness and despise government or authority. And we see this thing about the angels and the false teachers very intimately connect, connected as is to defile the flesh and the lust of the flesh because they want their own desires. It's very important to understand what an angel is. The word angel in the New Testament, the Greek agalos, and in Hebrew it's malak, but agalos is where we get angels from. And both of these words, whether it's the Greek or Hebrew, literally mean messenger. It's somebody that brings a message. It could be like a spiritual angel from God that's a minister in spirit, but it could also be a human messenger, depending on how it's used in the Bible. We see in the New Testament, there's at least eight occurrences where there are human messengers. John the Baptist was called, um, um, in the English you'll see it messenger, but in the Greek it's agalos or angel. Paul, messengers of J John, messengers of Jesus. So there can be human messengers and there can be spiritual messengers from God. Similarly, in the Old Testament, about half of the occurrences refer to human messengers. It's just a messenger that brought a message from one person to another. But then there's also spiritual messengers or spiritual angels. And even Jesus Christ is called a messenger in Malachi 3.1. He, of course, is God. He's the chief messenger because he is the gospel. But the importance of understanding the word angel is really messenger is that false teachers are like false angels because they bring a false message. And that's why they're false teachers and it's important to understand this word angel means messenger. To go one step farther, angels brought the word of God. The word of God came to us by messengers. Hebrews 2.2, 2, the word spoken by angels was steadfast. Many, many examples in the Old Testament about the angel speaking to the prophet or speaking to Israel. 1 Kings 13.18, an angel spoke the word of the Lord to a prophet. In 1 Kings 13, in Zechariah, there's many examples of his visions and his messengers were all given to him by an angel, a messenger, a spiritual angel, but a messenger. Acts 7, which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, who have received the law by the disposition of angels, and you have not kept it? Angels, their mo primary purpose of angels was to bring the word of God and again these false teachers of Jude they bring the word of God but it's perverted it's distorted it's made false and deceiving it's worth spending just a, a moment to talk about the history of demons it helps us understand about false teachers and demonic activity during our time now I'll tag this slide with the video we've done on this before which goes into much more detail but for now, we just want to understand that in the Old Testament, evil spirits are rarely mentioned. And when they are, they're typically sent and allowed by God to affect certain people. Notably Saul, for example, King Saul. But right before the advent of Christ, we find in Revelation 12 that the demons, the fallen angels, also known as the stars of heaven, were cast to the ground. That We saw the great red dragon, his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, cast them to the earth the dragon stood before the woman to devour her child as soon as it was born that's jesus christ as a child 
she brought forth a man child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. So there was this, this throwing down of the demons right before the advent of Christ. And isn't it amazing in the New Testament, in the Gospels, and in the book of Acts, we see a lot of demon possession. Demon possession was going on in the time of Christ and in the apostolic church. And then at the end of the apostolic church, once the Bible is completed, the focus of demons shifted. And when we look at the rest of the New Testament, we see it's about idolatry and false teaching. Please consider looking at that video that I've posted, uh, tagged on this slide. Okay, but the fallen angels are also held in chains of darkness. And when we look at that, we think, oh, they're, they're somewhere and they can't affect us. Well, that's not true because the Bible talks about demon activity. The chains of darkness are symbolic portraits. We see again in Jude 6, they're in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And we see that, that also in 2 Peter 2, 4, they're in the chains of darkness reserved unto judgment. And they're cast down to hell in 2 Peter 2, 4. It's the Greek word tartaro. It's the only occurrence of that. It means a deep abyss. It's everlasting chains under darkness. It's a spiritual place. Just like Satan is bound for a thousand years, that doesn't mean he can't affect the activities on this earth, but he has a certain amount of control placed on him and the demons during the church age. And that thing about darkness, it means there's no gospel light. It's a separation from God because God is light. Jesus is the light. Darkness, literally, it's the, it's the word zophos, which means gloom. It points to an eternal separation from God. We also see that the demons and the false teachers are destined for judgment. The angels, the judgment on the angels is just an example. The angels are going to be reserved in those everlasting chains under darkness, which is where they are now, unto the judgment of the great day. The judgment of the great day is the last day, the return of Christ, the ushering in of eternity. We see similar language about the false teachers. You use Sodom and Gomorrah, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah is set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. That's what's going to happen to these false teachers. Also in Jude 13, these false teachers are called wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Again, it's a judgment. So we see that these, these false teachers it, the, the book of Jude is very carefully showing how they're unsaved individuals or that are the false teachers. So now let's relate the false teaching that we see in churches around us today with the, book, the warnings in the book of Jude and the fact that these fallen angels or demons are influencing false teaching. Note 1 uh, Timothy chapter 4. The Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and they give heed to seducing spirits. Seducing spirits, these are demons, demonic activity, fallen angels. We see that seducing, it's literally the word deceiving, just like Satan deceives. These seducing spirits are at work still. They're under chains of darkness, but they're at work in false teachers that bring false gospels and false prophecy. They give heed to these seducing spirits and these doctrines or this teaching of devils and again that word devil there it's literally the word demon and it's just that king james uses devils instead but that's what they do and they speak lies and hypocrisy they're hypocritical they're lies about the bible on the one hand they stand for christ but on the other hand they stand for lust and worldliness it's not right having their conscience seared with the hot iron they have no conscience these people that are false teachers inspired by demons it can involve legalism, as it's the context in 1 Timothy 4, but any type of false teaching, false prophecy, or false gospels. More than that, we see that these demonic false teachers, they're under the influence of demonic activity. They bring envy and strife, and that's uh, to be expected because you have Christians in the church and you have demonic activity in the church. Note, if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, and not lie against the truth. When there's envy and strife, there's lying going on. It's not biblical. This wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly, sensual, or soulish, devilish, or demonic. That word devilish there is demonic. For where envy and strife is, there's confusion in every, 
every work. God is not the author of confusion, of course, but these false teachers bring division because it's confusing people. There, people say, well, this is the Bible, but why are we doing this? And why is the church so worldly? And why is this behavior okay? And why isn't this being preached about, etc.? And we see later, and we'll see this in an upcoming video, that these false teachers separate themselves. They cause divisions because they're sensual. It's a parallel passage to James 3. They're soulish, not having the spirit. Another important passage is found in 2 Corinthians 11, where there's in the churches today, in the churches of the uh, early church as well, there's false apostles. And they're called ministers or people that serve Satan, just like fallen angels, just like demons. That's what these false teachers are. They're servants or ministers of Satan. Note 2 Corinthians 11. I fear lest by any means as the serpent, which is Satan, beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity, which means uh, that is in Christ. And that word simplicity really means singleness. There's no hypocrisy. There's consistency. It's not saying one thing about how holy we have to be and then going out there and living like the world. It's that singleness that's in Christ. For if he that comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, and the Jesus that is preached is what we find in the Bible, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with them. And later in the passage we see, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. There's many people in the churches that say, I'm here, I'm a sent one. That's what an apostle is, a sent one. I'm sent here for Christ. And then they teach a bunch of false gospels and false prophecy. And they allow for lust in the church and worldliness in the church. It's all around us today. It turns the grace of God into licentiousness. And note, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He comes deceiving. He's subtle. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness. They look righteous, but they're not. Whose end shall be according to their works, because just like those false teachers in the book of Jude, they receive destruction because their works are evil, they're ungodly. And of course, we see the evil works or the sin of the false teachers of Jude. We see Jude 4, ungodliness, licentiousness, they deny God, spiritual fornication, lust, greed, ungodliness, they're soulish, not having the spirit. That's what comes with false teaching because they're not saved. Okay, finally, we're just going to touch a little bit on Babylon. Babylon, and I'm going to tag this slide. We have a whole series on Babylon, which is so important to understand. Babylon is a symbol. It's a symbol for false Christianity and all these false parachurches that, that, that should be part of the church, but they break off and they're not. All that is not right. But we see in Revelation 18, 2, we see that he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, it's become the habitation of devils. That's the word demons. It's the habitation of demons. There's demons in the church. It's these false teachers, false gospels, false prophecy, and the hold of every foul or evil spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Revelation 16, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, which is Satan, the mouth of the beast, which is the Antichrist, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, which is that false end-time Christian church. And the unclean spirits are demons. And note the mouth, they come out of the mouth because the mouth is where the words come for. The battle is for our minds. It's the battle of what's true in the Bible. Who are we going to be obedient to? Okay, just a quick summary about these false teachers they're as fallen angels or demons they're demonic because they rebel from the truth of god's word they turn grace the beautiful grace of god into a license to sin they allow for lustful ungodly behavior in the church and in their their the people in the church they teach doctrines of demons false gospels false prophecy they cause envy and strife and divisions in the church because people are confused what to believe. They preach another Jesus. They come as angels of light. They don't preach Jesus as the prophet. Jesus Christ. Christ means prophet. 
priest and king. He's to be obeyed and we're to worship him. We're going to move on into the next video, which is the symbolism of the fornication of Sodom and Gomorrah. A very important video to watch. Please consider subscribing to this channel. And thank you very much for watching this video.